Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 40, continuing on, point 37. We will finish the meditation. Long Chempas. Finding ease and comfort in enchantment by Keith Downing. Long Chempa was a, from the 1300s, late second half of the 1300s of Great Lama and Yogi. I'm just preparing. While the daytime Burns, right? While the daytime burns. Boy, is it hard to get that face in the picture. While in the daytime, becoming familiar with dreamtime reality at night, when the need to sleep overcomes us, this is the dream from page 59. Un upon complete familiarity with that realization, what realization, going back to 58, appreciating delusory objective appearances as dream. The intellect lets go and the grasping immediately ceases. The objective aspect debunked. The subjective side retires. Then whenever the mind meets situations as dream, fully conditioned to the idea that everything is a dream, whether it is affirmed or denied, pleasant or painful, do not think for a moment that the mind is true, moving or sitting or eating or waking, walking or talking with constant attention. Now I'm at the top left side of page 58. We sustain dream consciousness. When all that we see, all that we do, all that we think, to con is consonant with dream, our experience is dissociated. That's what we want, in other words. We want to dissociate from believing all of these things are real. That's the key. That's the freeing magic. That's the key to it. Think about it. While in the daytime, becoming familiar with dream reality, appreciating delusory ex objective experiences as dream, the intellect lets go. The intellect lets go. It lets go. Appreciating delusive, illusory, delusory objective appearances as dream, the intellect lets go and the grasping immediately ceases. The objective aspect debunked. The subjective side returns. No, the objective side debunks 
Think about it. I'm trying to get you to think about it. You have to think about it. So I'm going slowly and repeating myself, skipping back, back, and then going forward again. I'm going back to what we read in the prior episode, 40.36. The objective aspect, the, the you, the substantial you that's the same. Well, there is a part of you that's the same, but it's forever witnessing the changes. So can we get this next to my shoulder? Yeah, probably. Good boy. That's a coordinated effort. And my arm's in the way of the camera. That's just my hand. God, just trying to get things. See, if I get frustrated, I can't do the show. I'm not frustrated. I'm having fun. This is fun to me. It should be fun to you. If it's not fun, if you're not doing it with love in your heart, you're just contributing to the fall. You're supporting the war machine with your depression. They want you to be depressed and subservient and dependent on antidepressants which burn up your nervous system. Who was that? The people that profit from your weakness and live off of your worth. The invisible empire of finance. You have to relax. The top of page 58, we got into it. We went down, we're starting in 59, but what I'm going back to see, that whenever the mind meets situations as dream, the intellect searching inside and outside and in between for something that's substantial and solid to grasp and hold on to, unable to find any point of reference, it subsides into all penetrating skylight space and all compulsive mental activity ceasing, intrinsic presence. Arises. Intrinsic presence arises spontaneously as simply empty clarity. Grasping, ceasing, nothing to be grasped. The vessel inverted, its contents lost. The vessel of your identity, your resistance, your idea of fixation. Nothing is fixed except that which is not fixed. Hmm. I'm a pixie pixie. Bring you back to the light and love. Your inner light, your own. You heal yourself. That's what's so amazing. You don't need the Pope. He might be helpful to show you what not to do. How many wars did they support by their sins of omission, of not intervening to bring the peace? Don't you think World War I should have been ended after about two seconds? Henry Ford thought so, they blocked him. Then they called him an anti-Semite because he wrote about the international apostate bankers. They're not Jewish. It's not, that the, Jew, the true Torah Jews are not the problem. The ones who believe they're destined to rule 
but don't believe in doing good for its own sake and believe in power, sex, and money are the problem. That's not somebody that's a Jew, that's somebody that's fallen. That's, the point is not the race or the ethnic background. You could be Adolf Hitler. Don't think that he was Jewish, and if he was, that's beside the point. He made a mess. Turning on the Jews viciously. That's not how you're supposed to do it down here if you want to stay free. Grasping, ceasing, nothing to be grasped. Nothing to be grasped, so the grasping ceases. The fourth poison attachment, pride and envy is the fifth. Ignorance is the first, forgetting who you are, light and love. Then you become selfish because you're trying to find a substitute for that light and love in this world. A beer, a cigarette, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a sex change, an antidepressant, a scientific career, status in the world, money, homelessness. Maybe you just want to give up everything and say fuck you all and be homeless. But you're lost. Phenomena are disassociated, locking any boundaries. The vessel inverted, its contents lost. Phenomena are disassociated. In other words, you begin to pull back and dissolve your attention into the magic of the spontaneous presence of the primordial purity. That is non-dual, unconditional primal awareness. The bottom of page 58 of the meditation um, from Maha Yoga, Keith Dalman's Zogchen Now book from 2014. The meditation from Maha Yoga, starting on page 55, that we've been working through episode 40. The first analogy, the dream. This is the first analogy. Upon complete familiarity with that realization by involuntary resolution of the duality of grasping and grasp, of grasper and grasped, we are free of the compulsive attraction of mind to object. And with a definite feeling of a detachment from situations, whatever presents itself, timeless, empty floats in space, that is the natural, primordial dispensation. Once deprived of this incredible once deprived of its credibility, enslavement to impure circumstantial illusion becomes dominant pure enchantment, as if we were never to awaken from lucid dream. Your mind infuses the primordial ground. This is the heart of the analogy. The primordial dispensation, natural, Upon complete familiarity with that realization, the non-dual unconditional primal awareness lacking any boundaries, grasping, your grasping ceases, nothing to be grasped, the contents are lost, the vessel inverted. Upon familiarity, involuntary resolution of the duality of grasper and grasped, by that we are free of the, by resolving the duality of grasper and grasp. We are free of the compulsive attraction of mind to an object and with a definite feeling of detachment from situations, whatever presents itself. Timeless, empty, floats in space. That is the natural primordial dispensation. Once deprived of its credibility, Enslavement to impure circumstantial illusion. Once deprived of its credibility, the former enslavement to impure circumstantial illusion becomes dominant pure enchantment. Pure mind infuses the primordial ground, each delusion with past or future. But shining in between, envisioned in the here and now is not felt as existent the intellect's karma induced delusion absent yet visible a senses nature is primarily pure like a dream just as we know dream is internal vision absent 
before sleeping and after waking, shining only during sleep and even then without substance, just so we should know phenomena as groundless and baseless. While in the daytime, becoming familiar with dream reality. At night, when the need to sleep overcomes us, we lie down on our right side upon a comfortable bed like Buddha Sakyamuni. Shakyamuni in his nirvana posture when the breath is quiet and the eyes are still at the heart center with dreamlike concentration. Visualize a white syllable A. The Tibetan white syllable A from your point of view would look like this. Here we go. Down. Well, from I think from your point of view, it should go like, it goes like that. I think, okay, so it goes like, like this, like an A, a spiral. You visualize the Tibetan ah, look it up, don't be lazy. Ah, the space, fire, air, water, and earth are ram, yam, mom, kam, respectively, or ra, ya, ma, ka. And the ah is the fifth principle, the ether, the space, the void. And when the breath is quiet and the eyes are still at the heart center with dreamlike concentration, we visualize that white syllable A of shining translucent crystal of space. Shining translucent crystal, diminishing in size from fingertip to hair tip, and dreamlike light arises. At first we may dream many fearful dreams, but mindful of the dream, our fear dissolves of itself when natural concentration is effortlessly achieved. The yoga knows his dream is lucid dream, thereafter the soul practice is to see all dream is unreal, the absent but apparent delusory mind like dream has no essence to grasp and we know it beyond intellectual truth and falsehood page 60 the top there's just one page and a quarter left then regarding the process of transforming emotion pardon me. then regarding the process of transforming emanation in dream time to transform the body into brahma for instance, or to simply emanate as a Buddha or Bodhisattva, we simply relax with our wish. Into ambivalent space. Like that, from moment to moment, from Brahma to Indra. From God to man, whatever transformation we desire is accomplished in an unreal world. Furthermore, now multiplying those forms a hundred, a thousand, or ten million fold, we develop the facility to heal wherever needed. Further, we travel wherever we wish, to pure lands, to foreign countries, to the highest Buddha field, spelled as and sounding akanishka a k a n akan akanish a k a n i s h ish akanishta t a a k a n i s h t a akanishta further we travel wherever we wish to pure lands to foreign countries or to the highest buddha field akanishta wherever we see buddhas in hear their impeccable word and achieve yana or knowledge. Why? Excuse me. J-N-A-N-A -A in the Vedic. It's the same sound as ya, air, in the intellect. And samadhi, S-A-M-A-D-H-Y and multitudes of dikini. Dikinis, D-A-K-I-N-I-S. The fiercely wise, compassionate protectors of the Dharma. The female hero, heroines, the Dakinis, D A K I N I S, which literally translates into voila, Skywalker.
That's why Skydance Productions, Skydancer Productions, Tom Cruise produces his works and many others for J.J. Abrams and things. They have the name of the Dakini embedded in their name, Jedi. This channel is a word that refers to cha shamanic channeling of the Force. Vishitha was the teacher of Rama, 13,200 BC, according to Edgar Casey. He was like Yoda. The Sith Lords are anagram for shit, S-I-T-H. Those are the bad guys. They only have one student each. They believe in killing all their other failed, failing students or failed students. And the student that replaces them, I think, kills the master and then takes a new student. The Sith Lords vanquishing victory over them is the the vanquishing the Sith Lords, Vasitha. And my teacher was said by Ruth Montgomery's guides and aliens among us that were featured there. They gave private readings of questions we did not publish. But regardless, I don't remember where it was printed or said exactly in her work or amongst what she gave us privately. But Frederick was the reincarnation of the teacher of Rama, or the being in him, not the boy from Brooklyn who grew up abandoned and abused by women, and verbally abused, rather, verbally abused, probably, maybe physically, but not sexually, I don't think. He grew up fear thinking women would do that so easily because they were the way they were, and he was very hard on women and on uh, everyone around him because of the, he never wanted to be disappointed like that again. He wanted to have one up on everybody around him to keep from them from abandoning him. So he would throw them out when they fell short very quickly. And that was an element of the human quality mixed with the personality from that background in Brooklyn where the mother has him at 16 and by 18, she has about three children and then doesn't really take care of them. And there's another relative, female aunt, you know, the aunt, a theme, you know, like an, a female relative, an aunt or a grandmother that takes care of him. I think an aunt or an older sister of his mother. And he feels abandoned and probably never graduated high school, had dyslexia, became a model, knew Joey Hunter in the men's division, but he had a walk-in of a tolko, a conscious being, that could work for him. And it was no laughing matter and no joke. And it's two things going on at once. And he manifested a kind of bikini-like experience for me. And sexual tantra, tantra practices done in the right way are very liberating and freeing. And they break your desire. Because once you've really had a great orgasm, you, you just relax, finally. It's the, the death of your desire for this world. You just feel so fulfilled and relaxed. But it should be based on love, not sex for the sake of sex. Bonding with a deep love, a heartfelt love. Through thorough integrated practice day and night, the creativity of pure presence will surely manifest. The core undistorted, infallibly actualized the core undistorted, the core undistorted, infallibly actualized. That is the most profound way of the heart. Day and night, familiarizing ourselves with the dream world, the shackles of belief. In concrete reality, or material materiality are taken off. The shackles of belief in concrete materiality are taken off. Enclosures, mountains, and walls now form no impediment and miracles, psychic powers, and samadhis are realized. And then to clarify, the footnote says, yana or yana yoga, the sound of wa, ya, the air, the intellect, yana, j-n-a-n-a -A from the Vedic, is non-dual wisdom. Samadhi, samadhi, s-a-m-a-d-h-y from the, h-i from the Vedic is contemplation. And Dikini is pure vision, the um, fierce, the compassionate, feminine wisdom you develop within yourself. Finally, the Dharmakaya is the is the holistic 
This is the primary uh, description of the Trikaya uh, Absolute. The Dharmakaya is the holistic formalist dimension of light and awareness. Dharmakaya, Dharma, the idea of doing good for its own sake and serving others. Kaya, the body of that, is the holistic formalist dimension of light. Formless, dimension of light and awareness, and Rupa, R-U-P-A, Kaya, K-A-Y-A, is the dimension of formal emanation. With deep experience of this direct and naked realization, primal awareness dawns empty and luminous, and in the primordial spaciousness of the natural mind, both subjective dharmakaya and objective rupakaya, which is the dimension of formal emanation, subjective dharmakaya is in, it's an inner experience of the holistic formless dimension of light and awareness, and rupakaya, objective formal emanation, are spontaneously accomplished as in a dream, apply concentrated attention to the dream mode. Thus ends the episode. May you re-remember what you can never separate yourself from, the mind of clear light, the divine composer, the ongoing, constant, co-creating and co-composing by which you are sustained, animated, and into which you will return, dissolve, and from which you were created. God bless you all, for those that believe in God, Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, they don't believe in God, Hindus, they believe in gods, Hindus do, and gods, and they do believe in an absolute God, but God bless you all, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and may you find the mind of clear light Buddhists, and may the Kalki avatar return for the Vedics, the Vedantins, and may the Lotus King return for the Tibetan Buddhas, and may the Messiah return for the Jews, and may Christ return for the Christians, and may the Mahdi return for the Muslims, and may the Native Americans have their Messiah. Thank you for watching. Please consider a donation through Venmo, V-E-N-M-O. Contact me at PD Hinton pdhinton at gmail.com or call me at 305-407-0699 and within a week I should be at 786-438-9526. I doubt that I'll keep both numbers. Just email me or call the second number after a week from now. Today is December 12th, so by Christmas I should be on my new number for sure.